there's an old saying, the mail must get through. And that's because when post started, it was much harder to get a letter from A to B. Horse-drawn carriages faced the dangers of raging rivers, deep mud and even armed robbers. Letters from overseas travelled for months and sometimes years across stormy seas. All this was way before aircraft were invented, so there was no such thing as airmail, not by plane anyway, though we did have pigeons. The story really begins back in 1894 with the steamship uh, Wairarapa. They ran into a thick bank of fog and ran straight into Miner's Head off Great Barrier Island. The islanders who went to the rescue of the people uh, on the boat were unable to help them very much because they couldn't tell the people on the mainland that the ship had sunk. There was no communication between Great Barrier and Auckland at that time except for a weekly steamboat that brought out supplies from Auckland. And so it was three days before help arrived. And as a result of that, there was pressure to set up some sort of communication system between uh, Great Barrier and Auckland. And an enterprising man in Auckland decided that pigeons could come to the rescue. Here's an image of two people on Great Barrier Island with pigeons, and these pigeons, of course, were able to carry little messages tied to their legs. Flimsies, that's what these little messages were called. They could carry maybe up to five messages at a time, um, wrapped in waxed paper or waterproof paper of some sort. And those pigeons could make the flight in about two hours. The pigeon gram took off. Just three months later, a rival opened up shop. The original Great Barrier Pigeon Gram Agency was now competing with the Great Barrier Pigeon Gram Service. The new Pigeon Gram Service was a little different. They sold stamps for their flimsies. And here's an example of a, a flimsy with the stamp on it. This is a really important one, actually, because it's the first message that went from Auckland to Great Barrier Island. But they issued, in all, four sets of stamps. Initially, they inscribed on them Great Barrier Island Special Post. Now, remember, this was a private service, and the post office, when they heard about this, objected to the word post. Um, so they complained, and eventually they forced them to change the stamps and to overprint them with the word Pigeon Gram to um, hide the word special post. The original Great Barrier Pigeon Gram Agency, the one that had initiated the service at a charge of two shillings, uh, realised that the, uh, the service, who had um, undercut them with the stamps uh, priced at one shilling, uh, and the very fact of stamps themselves, they realised they were losing business. So they decided they would need to issue stamps as well. They had much more brightly coloured stamps, they were triangular in shape, and they again undercut the price. So for a bird flying from Great Barrier to Auckland, the price was just sixpence rather than a shilling. But going from Auckland to Great Barrier, which was more difficult, the price remained at a shilling. The pigeons were trained to home to Auckland, so flying the other way was against their natural instinct. Post to Great Barrier cost more because the birds needed special training. When the pigeons flew into the loft, if the message wasn't removed from their leg quite quickly, they would start to eat it. <laughs> and here is an example of a, a flimsy that has been attacked by the pigeon and it's become more or less illegible, as you can see. For 11 years, pigeons like these made countless crossings of the Hauraki Gulf, running a vital communications link. Who knows how many were lost at sea, or even worse? I guess it gives a new meaning to another old saying, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs>